morning. I want to welcome you today to Good Shepherd United Methodist Church's online service. It is a joy that you have chosen to join us today. I hope that as you worship with us in this time ahead, you will indeed feel the presence of the living God. I do want to remind you that every Sunday we worship together in person at Good Shepherd, 305 Smallwood Drive in Waldorf, 10 a.m. You are always welcome to join us in person, just as you are to be here on this online format. Let us worship the living God together. What a joy it is to be together in this place. We find such encouragement from gathering as one body in the presence of God. As you enter into this space of worship today, wherever you are, I want to invite you to look around you a bit. To see where God is all around the space that you are in. To recognize God's place in your life. God longs to take us today as we are, where we are, and to shape and to mold us that we might continue to grow into the beautiful creation that God has created us to be, exactly the shape that God wants for us to become. Let us, as we enter into this time of worship, singing and praying together, let us know that whatever shape we find ourselves in today, God has us in God's hands. Let us worship together. Amen. You are 
are holy, you are mighty, you are worthy, worthy of praise. I will follow, I will listen, I will love you. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him. My Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for you. You are holy, you are mighty, you are worthy, worthy of praise. I will follow. I will listen, I will love you all of my days, and I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy, I will love and adore Him, I will bow down before Him, I will sing of peace and I will live my life for you. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure all of my days are held in your hand into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes. I'm captured by your Calling, set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Teach me, Lord, I pray. Take me, hold me, use me, fill me. I give my life to the power.
my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your by your holy calling set me apart I know you're calling me to yourself lead me Lord I pray take me mold me use me fill me I give my life Potter's hands, mold me, guide me, lead me, walk beside me. I give my life to the Potter's hand. Take me, mold me. I give my life to the Potter's hand. Mold me, guide me, lead me, walk beside me. I give my life to the Potter's hand. I give my life to the Potter's hand. Good morning, church family. I find peace after I do housework or volunteer work or vigorous exercise. Just to rest with a cold drink and reflect on how I've contributed to something outside of myself is fulfilling and refreshing. However, the only lasting peace is the peace Jesus offers. The peace of the Lord be with you. Hey everybody, it's Miss Laura. I'm coming to you from my friend's yard and I have a great children's message for you today. Today we're talking about the potter's hand. God is the great potter and he forms us all in a unique and wonderful way. But that made me curious. So I looked up, well, how are regular dishes made on YouTube last night? So a dish like this, which many of us have, including myself, um, I looked up how they're made, and there, there's a factory where there's all these conveyor belts, tons and tons of conveyor belts, and there's molds on the conveyor belts that come across, all these molds come across, do 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 do, and then the, the funnels come down and squirt the wet, whatever it is that, that makes the dish, it's a resin composite, and, um, and it squirt, 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 and then it goes through a fire, and it gets nice and hard and ready to go, they put a little uh, paint on it to give it a design, fire it one last time, and then they just start, well, before they can stack them, they got to test them. So they'll take them and they'll test them to see if they are strong enough. And if they're not strong enough, or if they have any defects in them, they are forced to throw the entire batch away and start over. If it passes the test, then they get stacked, 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 put in a box, Sent to the store and that's how we can buy dishes but the potter is different a potter takes a piece of clay and molds it and pinches it and pulls it and shapes it and maybe adds some handles and i actually have a sample here from my friend lee campbell and i know it's lee's it has her initials and 1989 written on the back so she made this a while back and you can see she had to sculpt the center out. She had to make a little heart. She added some handles. She had to add some beautiful paint and then she fires it. But guess what? If she makes a mistake in the middle of it, she can whoop, 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 as long as it's wet, put it all back together and she can start over until she gets the exact dish that she's looking for. It's a pretty cool process. And that reminds me 
of our Bible verse from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 18, verse 1 through 6. And this is out of the message. God told Jeremiah, up on your feet, go to the potter's house. When you get there, I'll tell you what I have to say. So I went to the potter's house, and sure enough, the potter was there working away at his wheel. Whenever the pot the potter was working out turned out badly, as sometimes happens when you're working with clay, the potter would simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot. And then God's message came to me. Can't I do just as this potter does, people of Israel? Watch this potter in the same way that the potter works his clay. I work on you, people of Israel. And this is the word of God. The same way that a potter works his wheel and makes a unique piece of art, I can work on you. God's not saying, I am going to make a million carbon copies of people and you're going to be the same as the million people standing next to you. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, I am going to form you, I'm going to shape you, and I'm going to make you beautiful art. And that's what he does for each and every one of us. And you're not going to find another you. You're not going to find another Miss Laura. You're not going to find another you anywhere. So be proud of you. Be happy for the you God made you. You are just what God wanted exactly the way he wanted you. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for taking your time and making us exactly the way you wanted us. Thank you for loving us and joyfully molding us into our unique selves. We pray that you be with us this week until we meet again. And in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Good Shepherd. Today's scripture lesson comes from Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. The potter and the clay. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as the potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. God, oh.
when by thy grace the victory's won in death's cold wave I will not flee since God through Jordan leadeth me he leadeth me he leadeth me by his own hand he leadeth me his faithful As we prepare to hear God's word this day, will you pray with me? O oh, holy God, come into this moment. Come into all the spaces where we are right now and speak to us. Speak to us anew with your grace and your love. Help us to know that whatever shape we are in, Lord God, you are here to mold us and shape us anew. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the human body has many shapes, doesn't it? Round, pear, apple shape, hourglass, athletic, to name a few. Some of us, like me, are tall. Some are short. Many are somewhere in between. God has created us all a bit different. Our society is hyper-obsessed with the physical shape of our bodies all too often. And while health is important for all of us, I wonder if we spend too much time focused on our outer selves and not enough on our inner shape, our spiritual shape. So today I want to ask us, what shape are we in? Imagine that you are sick for a week or two. Not a drastic illness or anything, more like a common cold that just doesn't quite go away. If you are someone who regularly exercises, even just take reg takes regular walks, being sick for a week or two makes you take a step backwards. Likewise, during times of illness, your typical faith activities, such as prayer and Bible study, may have fallen a bit by the wayside. Even though it might be due to your current preoccupation with extra sleep and blowing your nose, rather than any kind of faith crisis, it's amazing how fast you can spiritually get out of shape. I believe that as churches, as a nation, and perhaps even as a world, we are struggling with being spiritually and emotionally out of shape. So if you're feeling some of that today, you're really not alone. Everyone was affected in some way by the COVID pandemic that started in 2020. This pandemic was global and social unrest reached every part of the United States and really the globe. It created uncertainty, different patterns of working and of daily life. Schools were changed, patterns of life shifted. And in some ways it has been a global shift or pause due to this illness and its effects both short-term and long-term. In the midst of it all, we have discovered new patterns of being, new ways of relating to one another, both for good and maybe not so good. We, we've learned we can have meetings via Zoom and family reunions that way if we need to. We have been reminded of all the many ways that we are interconnected on this round-shaped planet. But still in many ways, we are a world out of shape. This isn't really new, however. God's people have always struggled to be in shape. In our lesson today, Jeremiah, the prophet, a young prophet, has a growing awareness and apprehension of the disaster and ruin that were coming to the nation of Israel. God's people needed to be reshaped. God sends Jeremiah to the home of a potter to give him a vision for what God needs to do with the people of Israel. And we read, 
Jeremiah is saying. So I went down to the potter's house and there he was working at his wheel. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to him. Jeremiah in this vision brings a word of impending judgment. The people are the vessel, the clay being made on that wheel. The potter is God and, and the hands of God are, are, are working this clay. But, but the clay has become spoiled, out of shape, not doing what God needs it to do. And we read that God will have to break nations and people down just as a potter breaks down and reshapes the clay to bring that vessel into its full beauty. Now this isn't meant to be a harsh judgment of a God who wants to break us apart painfully or squash us under his foot. No, this is the warning of a God who loves us and longs to shape us day by day because God knows that if we allow for ourselves to be shaped spiritually, we will be in better shape when hard things come and our flaws show up. God wants to lovingly mold us and form us across our lifetimes. God was looking for the same thing in Israel that God is looking for us today. A repentant heart that is willing to be shaped. Because at some point we're going to find ourselves with a heart that is broken. On the potter's wheel, as it were, confronting circumstances beyond our control. And we may not understand what's going on in our lives. And God will be there trying to shape us. But you know what? Perhaps in these times of stress and confusion, much like COVID, God will be able to do some of God's best work to restore our hearts. But having God reshape us may feel really hard at times. Nearly 19 months ago, as some of you know, I was laying on a table with my heart in the hands of a surgeon. Part of what he needed to do was to repair and reshape my, my aortic arch because it had an aneurysm. That is, it was sort of blown out of shape and vulnerable after years of my aortic valve not functioning properly. It was not easy for me to think about someone literally holding my heart in their hands. But you see, my heart needed to be reshaped and reformed so that I could be well. And now that it has been, it is up to me to keep doing the work so that my heart will be healthy. That means eating well, reducing stress, and exercising my body, which includes this heart. It's easy to get back out of shape without trying too hard. So how do we get our spiritual selves in shape? Because it's easy there to get out of shape as well. First, we need to see our heart as like that clay being formed by the loving hands of God. When we are in the potter's hands, feeling that pressure, feeling the molding of God's fingers, we can relax and trust that we are being fashioned into a vessel of honor that is fit for God's use. To visualize your life as clay for the divine potter is to know that God's hands are on your heart. God has a purpose in mind and the skill and the ability to fulfill it, to make us into a beautiful vessel for God. Just like clay in the potter's hand, Jeremiah says, so are we with God. The second way we need to get ourselves in shape is to do the work to keep ourselves spiritually healthy. Just like I have to eat well, reduce stress, and exercise my heart, we have to do likewise spiritually. What does caring for our spiritual hearts look like? Well, nourishment, 
Bible study, daily devotions. These are important parts of nourishing ourselves, nourishing that spiritual heart so that it has energy to draw upon, to live. We need nourishment. Stress reduction. We all could use some of that, but did we, know, did we know that spiritually there are ways that God offers to us to do that? Worshiping together like this, worship is stress reduction in some ways. It allows us to be in God's presence and breathe in more deeply God's love and grace. To sing, to pray, to worship, to take that pause. Likewise, prayer is part of our stress reduction technique. We pray, whether it be corporately together in a worship setting or on a Wednesday midday prayer as some of us gather every week, or quietly in our own spaces, or in nature, or driving our car to work. That is part of our stress reduction to turn to God and to pray. We exercise. That is the third way that we keep our spiritual hearts strong. And how is that spiritually? That exercise looks like using our spiritual selves to reach out and to serve others. Just like our physical bodies are all uniquely shaped, this will take unique shapes for each of us. For example, there's no one right way to do devotions or Bible study. But we need to do it, to be clear, just like we need to eat every day and eat healthy food, not just whatever happens to be on a shelf. There is no perfect way of worship. How we've learned that in the last couple of years, that for many of us, some weeks entail this kind of worship, being in our homes or hotel rooms or wherever we are this week, that we're not able to be in a church sanctuary. But we need to be committed to regular worship. It's part of that reduction of stress. It's part of that encountering God. It's part of God also giving us what we need for the week ahead. There are many ways that we can serve others as well. Serving in the church as leaders, helping children and youth, serving meals for our place, ASP mission projects, even at home, which we're starting to work on now. Or just noticing people in our community or our neighborhood who need help and simply offering that help. But if we don't serve, the spiritual heart can get stiff and forget its purpose. So to keep our spiritual selves in shape, we need to nourish ourselves, we need to reduce our stress, and we need to serve, we need to allow ourselves to exercise our spiritual selves. So again, I ask us today, what shape are we in? How well have we been exercising our spiritual hearts? How well have we been nourishing our spiritual selves? How high is our stress today? Because we have not availed ourselves of the ways that God longs to come and hold our hearts in God's hands. God longs to shape us and mold us this day, to allow us to be like clay in the potter's hands. May we allow ourselves anew to be held and shaped by the potter's hands this day so that God can continue to make us into a wonderful, beautiful vessel through which God can pour God's love through us into this world. May it be so. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. 
Mold me and make me This is what I pray Change my heart, oh God Make it ever true Change my heart, oh my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Please join with me in lifting up these joys and concerns, as well as those you add silently. Prayers of joy for Sandy Schleep's baby granddaughter. She responded well to treatment and is doing well. She will be continued to be monitored. Thanks for all the prayers. For Pastor Jean Parr, who returns to the pulpit at Pisgah United Methodist Church today, after a long illness. She is doing well and will continue to be monitored. Please pray for Bill Van Blarkham in Mount Vernon Rehab after hospitalization. For Frank Adgate, hospitalized for two weeks in Florida for retirement. David Lindley, Debbie Fonzo on the death of her brother last week and her aunt this week. Students and educators as a new school year begins, especially our School of the Week, Paul C. Barnhart Elementary School. For our government and church leaders, for justice and healing in our nation, for flood victims in the South. Let us pray. We thank, the, we thank you that you are God and are faithful to hear and respond to our prayers. Give us your grace and peace and strengthen us to call on you for our needs, both spoken and unspoken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we are called to invest in the work of God as we offer our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. It is a way that we can nourish others in God's kingdom. One of the special ways that we can do that is through our monthly special offering, which this month for September is our mission in Angola that we are supporting through the United Methodist Church. We support missionary Katala Katumbo and the Kuseya mission. This mission is in place to help educate and grow children in that community and at the same time helping to develop agricultural support and resources in that region. Every dime that you give will go straight to helping that mission. And so I would ask that you be generous as we support the work in Angola, one of many places where the United Methodist Church is in mission and ministry throughout the world. Let us pray together. Holy God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in mission with your people throughout this globe. We ask that as we offer our gifts this day, those that will care for our ministry locally here at Good Shepherd and those that will travel the globe to help people in places we may never visit, see, or understand. But we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to give, for you have first given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is at this time that we have the privilege of coming to this table 
to receive the grace of God in Christ Jesus. That's what this Holy Communion meal is about, about receiving God's grace. And so as we gather at this table and whatever table or space you are in, know that this Holy Communion meal represents Christ's presence in our lives this day and every day. Let us join together as we pray together for God to come into these moments for us. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God this day. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment for silent confession and reflection. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now give thanks over this holy meal. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right in a good and joyful things always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again.
pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and in all the places and spaces we find ourselves this morning. And on the gifts of bread and the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, you are invited to take the cups, the pre-filled cups that you have received from the church office. If you need more of those, please let one of us know when we can bring them. But you may receive now Holy Communion as Brian sings our closing song this day. What a joy it is that you have chosen to join us today for this time of worship. 
I hope that you have felt God's blessing upon your life this time, that you have felt God wanting to shape you and mold you, and most of all, call you beloved. Receive now this benediction as we go out to serve God and to continue to nourish ourselves as those who are called to live as God's people. As we go out into a new week, may we trust that God goes with us as God's called people. May we continue to sing of God's grace and goodness. Let us go in peace in the name of Jesus, our hope and our promise. Amen and amen.